All right, guys, it turns out we've got three and a half weeks to get the car finished, which seems kind of ridiculous, I'll be honest, at the moment. There is so much still left to do. I've still got a massive list of things to do. Some of them I can um, postpone until after the mapping and like after the first drift day because we've got a little break then between that and the first round of BDC, only like a week and a half or something, but yeah, a little break. And um, so I can do some of that stuff then, but most of the stuff we need to do, like actually finishing the car so it actually runs and works, um, we've got to get done in the next three weeks, which seems pretty impossible because it's taken four months to get to this point and there's still shitloads of stuff left. So I don't know, I don't know if that's gonna happen. I've literally been spending like 10, 11, 12 hours here every day for the last week or two and it's gonna to have to carry on for the next three weeks to have any chance of getting this finished. It's made worse by the fact that the manifolds are gonna be going to get coated for about a week, maybe more. Um, so that's gonna mean I can't do anything that relies on the turbos being in position or any of the intake piping or anything like that. And um, so that's gonna slow us down a bit, but I've tried to save a load of jobs like the fuel system and stuff like that. I've tried to save them for that period of time. So basically out of those three weeks, we've only got two weeks where I can do anything related to the turbos. Like I still need to make the downpipes and all that sort of stuff. Um, and loads of heat shield stuff and loads of stuff um, that we can't do when the turbos aren't here. So. Yeah, um, I'm gonna crack on. I probably won't get a chance to film that much again because I'm so tight for time. Yeah, I'll do my best to film stuff, but I'm not making any promises. I'll probably just end up showing you like what I've done after I've done it. Um, speaking of which, actually, I did make one thing yesterday. Right, so this is what I made yesterday. Um, this pipe, obviously it took a while to make all the pie cuts and weld everything um, for the air filter on the passenger side because previously that wasn't there. I'd only done that side. Um, which does actually mean that these little, these little vent things are kind of functional now because air filters in there. I mean, in reality, not doing a lot and it's not like it would have struggled to actually bring air in anyway, but whatever, just, just humour me, kind of functional. Um, yeah, I also made these brackets, you probably can't see there's a bracket up there that holds this up, and I made a bracket for this side as well, um, but yeah, they didn't turn out great to be honest, but, and they took fucking ages to make, this one mounts off the anti-roll bar, this one I just gave up trying to mount it off the anti-roll bar and just drilled a hole in the um, chassis leg up there, you can't see, but whatever, um, they're mounted, they're done. So we're going to move on to, um, what are we going to do? Oh, coolant system. We're going to make a swirl pot and a header tank. Right, what I meant to say was a swirl pot and an expansion tank. Normally these cars don't have um, a swirl pot or header tank. Header tank and swirl pot are kind of the same thing, um, except the swirl pot swirls the fluid around to help get rid of bubbles. The header tank just lets the fluid sit there and air travels up to the top, basically. Um, but we've replaced the stock coolant expansion tank with this, which is much more useful. Um, so the expansion tank is now gonna go here somewhere. I'm gonna make a custom one, mount it here. Obviously all this shit will be tidied up and neatened out of the way. Still got loads of crap from the fire to um, get rid of, but yeah, the expansion tank is gonna go here, probably a box. And then the swirl pot is gonna be like a cylinder that's gonna sit about here. So yeah, let's get on with making some shit. So I've finished making this now. Turned out all right. As usual, there's always some bits of welding that could have been a bit neater and a bit nicer, but yeah, for the most part, I'll take it. So we're gonna put this in place um, about here, like I showed before, which means we need to make some kind of bracket to attach it to the firewall. And um, because of the whole fire issue the other day, I don't know if I dare weld anything directly to the firewall. So I think I'm just gonna drill some holes, put some rivet nuts in, and then we'll um, attach the bracket to that. There we go, made a bracket. It's not the best thing ever. It's not particularly sturdy either, but it'll do the job. It won't fall off, fuck it. Right, so what we've got to do now is make the coolant lines that are gonna go basically from 
over there. You can see how much of a mess and how little space we've got everywhere now. Um, but yeah, from those red and blue connectors that you can see back there that come off the coolant hard line, um, down to the turbos, and then out the turbos and into the wastegates, and then out of the wastegates and into these two. Again, we're pretty tight for space up here, but I'm kind of used to that now, to be honest. So yeah, let's get making some lines. All right, I've marked on here how long it wants to be. So we're just gonna tape it up, cut it with an angle grinder real quick. Now, because this line's gonna run pretty close to the exhaust manifold, we are gonna put some this shiny gold heat sleeve on in front of the motorsport. You're using plenty of this stuff. I might have to order some more soon because I'm getting through it. There we go, nice and shiny. Again, because these are PTFE fittings, we've got to use the olive thing. So I'm going to just take the tape off. And I'm first, I'll put this over. I always forget to do that. And then we've got to do the fun bit, which is picking this stuff apart. There we go, now we can slide this over the end. Push it on nicely. And one thing I realized from doing this a few times is that a tiny bit of lubricant on the threads seems to help a lot. And also on this bit that's going to slide into the um, olive. There we go. Like a dream. So much easier when there's a bit of lube on the threads. Right, now that it's got pretty tight, I'm just going to stick it in the vise and do the rest with the spanner. Now, as always, I'm going to end up scratching the fuck out of it because I don't have an aluminium spanner that actually fits this. So we have to do it with this steel one. And it tends to scratch it a bit. But, whatever. There we go. That's not gone too bad, to be fair. There we go. Hold on. All shiny. Let's go put it on the car. Right, so we've got a few of the lines done now. Um, we've got this one, you can see the, the heat's leaving there. Um, we've got this one from the turbo and the wastegate on this side, going to the swirl pot thing. And um, we've got both lines coming out of the coolant hard line. You're probably not gonna have to see very well down here, but I'll do my best to show you. I can't remember if I explained already, but yeah, I welded something onto the, um, the coolant hard line so that we can then tee off that to go to each of the turbos. So I've made that line that goes under there. Again, it's really hard to see um, because we've got so many things going on back here. These are fuel lines, quick release fittings, but we'll do a whole separate episode on um, the fuel stuff when I finish making that. But yeah, this line goes down here. You can't see, but it goes off there, goes to the turbo. This one goes down this side and goes to the turbo this side, which I'll show you from underneath. Right, we're underneath now, and this is the other end of that hose that splits off from the um, coolant hard line that I just showed you. So this comes down here. I will add some P-clips to kind of mount this nicely to the chassis so it's not just flapping around like that. But um, yeah, it goes into the turbo, comes out the turbo, goes to the wastegate, and then we need to make this one, which comes out the wastegate and goes off to the swirl pot thing that I just showed you. Uh, so that's gonna come across here, P-clip to the side here again, run up and then all the way across and over to the swirl tank thing, which is somewhere up there. You can't see it, but it is. Okay, I've been busy making even more lines. I've not filmed most of it, but literally spent hours and hours making lines for the boost controller, uh, which then tees off and goes to one side of the wastegates. And this line, which is what I'm just finishing now, um, is gonna go into that blue T piece there that you can see, um, which tees off to the other side of the wastegates. We've got this going to the blower valve, which isn't in position at the moment, but you get the idea. Um, loads and loads of stuff underneath the car, which I'll show you in a sec. But yeah, it's getting there. I know it looks a complete mess at the moment. I'm gonna have to tidy a lot of this up. Um, the wiring will get some more sleeve input on it. Some of these TPs and things will be in slightly different places to make it a bit tidier. Still got to make the fuel lines. Um, but yeah, it is gonna be a mess back there because a lot of that stuff just has to be back there and there's not really that good of a way to keep it tidy. So yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a spaghetti junction back there. But yeah, I'm gonna finish making this line now, which is not a PTFE one. This is a rubber one or nitrile, nitrile, however that's pronounced. It's one of those. So we need to go finish making this one. So just like with the PTFE lines, we've marked where we're gonna cut it. I'm just gonna cut it with an angle grinder. And I found with these ones, this is really important to get a nice clean cut because otherwise if the tiniest bit of it frays out, then this does not wanna go over the end. Now that has frayed a little bit, so we'll see if this works or not. I'm not sure if this really helps, but it makes me feel better. Just having a little bit of lubricant around the outside of this just to try and make it slide on a bit better. Oh yeah, not too bad. 
not too bad. The other ones that I've done, it also does depend on the, the hose that you get as well. Some of the other ones that I've done are on different um, brand hose. Still pretty expensive, not like cheap eBay stuff, but um, yeah, different hose seems to make a big difference to how easy or how difficult it is to get on. Um, but yeah, on some of the other ones it was an absolute nightmare to get that on. But that has gone fairly well. I don't know if you're going to be able to see, but it's um, seated all the way up in there next to the threads, so we're good to go. Again, it seems really important to lube these threads up even more so than on the other ones. And that's nice and lubricated, so it should just go straight in. No dramas. These straight ones are a pain in the ass though, because they've only got a tiny little bit to grip onto. I don't know why it's different for straight ones versus the angled ones, but for whatever reason, it is. It's getting very tight now. There we go. Done. Let's make sure it fits. All right, that's on the car. I actually ended up changing the straight end that was going down there into the T-piece. Um, I actually ended up changing that for a 45 because it ended up working a lot better. Just having a longer hose here, looping around, kind of kept it out of the way of other stuff. Again, some of this will be tidied up and pinned back um, a bit better than what you can see here. But yeah, that's that's pretty much done. I'll show you underneath now so you can see all the boost lines and shit from under there as well. I've also still got to make one more line for the swirl pot. I can't remember if I said that's what that is hanging out there. Um, but yeah, I'll show you underneath. All right, now we're underneath the car. This is what I've been busy doing for the last two days, basically, is figuring out and making all these boost lines because it's super tight for like where things can go as usual. And these two lines, this one and this one, need to be the same length because we're splitting pressure here. Pressure from the inlet manifold comes here, splits um, and goes to both waste gates. That needs to be pretty much the same, so they both do the same pressure. Um, same with this line that comes off here and this line that comes off here. They loop up and round and tee together up there. They need to be the same length, which I really struggled to get them the same, so they're not quite the same. Hopefully, it's not going to be a massive issue, but we'll see. And uh, yeah, it's just, just taking a long time, just planning out figuring out which fittings I need, what direction everything can go without hitting the gearbox and hitting each other and hitting the oil sump things and hitting the screamer pipes. And yeah, it's just been a lot of work, very time consuming, way more time consuming than I was expecting. But it is all done now. Um, the last things that I need to do really are just add some sort of clips somewhere to pin some of this stuff in a bit better because at the moment it can kind of flap around and touch the really hot exhaust stuff. So I don't know, I might, I'm tempted to just like weld some little bungs onto the uh, transmission which I don't really like the idea of doing, but I can't really see a better way of doing it at the moment. I could maybe just use some like stick-on ones, but I think with the amount of heat that's going to be around here, the glue on the stick-on ones will probably come undone pretty quickly. But I don't know, maybe we'll try that first before we resort to welding the gearbox. Um, so yeah, that'll probably do for this video. I know we didn't really do a lot. We made the swirl pot, made a load of lines. That's about it. Yeah, we've also now only got about, was it two weeks now, I think, until the car needs to start up? Less than two weeks? Yeah, like a week and a half. So yeah going to be very busy over the next few days but yeah whatever um, ends up being next I think it's going to be making the down pipes and the screaming pipe because we have to change the screaming pipes and stuff um, so yeah I think that's probably what's going to be next so I will see you in that video